And then you've got to be willing to sacrifice pretty much everything to get there. And it might not work, but you have to be willing to sacrifice everything at the next venture to get there and not get discouraged by the first venture. Real Estate Investing Profits presents Profit Masters with your host, world-renowned real estate coach and investor, Corey Boatwright. Now, strap in and get ready to learn elite wealth-building investment strategies taught by six- and seven-figure house-flipping masters as they reveal their best real estate investing profit secrets to you right now. What is going on, potty people? This is Corey Boatwright. I am the president of Real Estate Investing Profits and your host of Real Estate Investing Profit Masters. We're actually making some cool changes to the company very soon, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. Follow me on Facebook. If you haven't done that already, just go to facebook.com forward slash Corey Boatwright and you will connect with me. I'd love to have you on there. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you download the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Quick Start Guide at 38470. You just text the word profit to 38470 and automatically you will get that book sent to you, a link to it so you can go enjoy it. We've had thousands and thousands of people uh, download it. So today we have an incredible, phenomenal guest and he is going to blow you away. Why? Why do you say so? Well, who do you know? I want you to think for just a second. Who do you know that did 1,900 wholesales last year? Yeah, in over 18 different cities, right? 1,900 wholesales last year. Uh, nobody <laughs> except Mark Bloom. He is the CEO of Net Worth Realty and uh, out of Texas, and they are absolutely crushing it right now. That's where their headquarters is. And we have just a kill, one of my favorite interviews um, because Mark just gets real. He and I have so many things in common in terms of just kind of how our outlook on life is and some experiences. And so I hope uh, you really tune in and uh, take some notes on this interview. It is really, really good. He really uh, lays out some cool things here that uh, I think has really helped him get to where he is in life. So we ask all of the questions uh, to really dig deep and to see where he is and what he's doing. And uh, I, I know you're just really going to enjoy what he is doing right now with Net Worth Realty. All right. So without any further ado, here's Mr. Mark Bloom. All right, Mark, you there, my man? Sure. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, bro? Doing great, man. Good to see you. And you too. You too. Now, are you in, uh, where are you calling in from, Texas? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Yes, sir. You no, know, there is a lot of people that I know in Dallas, Texas. David Phelps out there. Uh, yeah. Ryan uh, Stuman. You know Stuman out there. He does some uh, big marketing. That's somebody you should meet if you don't know him. Um, yeah. And uh, there's, uh, there's a, uh, we, uh, we, my wife and I go out there all the time because you're like three hours from Oklahoma City. Right? Yeah, it's not far. Yeah, so we go out there to, to comedy clubs all the time nice. and uh, great Asian places to eat. Uh, You'll have to hit me up out. next time you come in town, man. I will. I will. Yeah. Um, but man, I appreciate you uh, being on here. It's it's actually a real honor to have you on here because I, that, I, dude, I remember whenever Medley, so you and I met in Collective Genius and one of the most, I think one of the most amazing masterminds in the country, Agreed. Uh, some top investors in the country, you know, the caliber of those type of individuals in, the, in there and you being one of them. Uh, whenever they kind of said some of the things that you are doing, <laughs> I was just like, what? Wait a minute. Are you sure that he did he just say he was doing that many wholesale deals and that many places around the country? So I think people are going to be blown away uh, once they understand what your model is and uh, how you're just crushing it right now. And so I want to open that up here, man. Tell us a little bit about who you are. What's the area that you're focusing on the most right now? in real estate, Mr. Mark Bloom. I appreciate that, man. So we are, and also I'm honored to be on here. I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to put me out to the people who you're working with and, and talk about what's going on because it is a still a burgeoning industry. It's just starting to really get going. Uh, we feel like we've been at the leading edge of it. I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. 
Um, I have two partners that are, are in the business with me as well. Uh, one also at about 20 years uh, and the other maybe just shy of that, 18 or 19. Um, we are one of the nation's largest, if not the nation's largest wholesalers, uh, clearing house for properties to usually other investor buyers, uh, sometimes to funds, but we really usually deal more with the, with the individual. Um, we have, I believe, 18 locations now nationwide. We should get up to 20 here, maybe just after the first of the year. Nice. Um, we're not quite in Oklahoma City yet. We've got somebody, a couple people that are interested in it. Uh, but there's a lot of business. We, we look to work with other wholesalers in every market that we're in. We look to work with agents. We look to work with anybody that can bring us a property. I mean, we have built the, the wheel that helps us to move these properties at what I consider to be the highest level of demand in the marketplace. Um, we educate that demand. We talk to them a lot. We try and work with them. We assist them. Um, and so we're able to help other people, like you said yourself, as a beginning wholesaler back in the day, you, you don't know what you're doing. You're looking for your first short sale or your first way to do it. And when you get it, it's like, okay, now you're trying to build the bridge uh, over the water that you just got to. So we can, we can just help and drop a bridge in place and run it through our system. Absolutely, man. And so it's interesting your story because you actually passed the bar. I, I do. Uh, more be, I don't practice. Be, you don't practice, but you pack, you practice, you, you pass the bar. I know another friend of mine, Chris McLaughlin, that did something yep. similar to graduating in Georgetown and uh, basically passed the bar. But now you're, you're able, you know, to kind of use that. That's a big leverage point. Uh, you understand the game, I think, from another level. It also Maybe. gives you authority in that in that regard. Um, certainly. And why don't you tell about a little bit about that story, but before you go into that, I, I got to know what, what did you do last year on, on wholesales, uh, you know, in total, as far as the number of properties that we did. Yeah. Last year, I want to say we were 1900 and change. <laughs> I just remember, I remember somebody saying that and I was like, did he say 1900? Yeah. 1900 wholesales. I'm really man. proud of it, man. It's something that we've grown. Pretty we've awesome. Grown. Thank you, man. We promote from within. Uh, you know, we've been doing it 20 years. I mean, it's not something, we, you know, we opened Net Worth Realty in 2008, right like three months before October 2008, which is when Lehman went down. Um, but we've been in the business for 20 years and it's taken us 20 years to build the contacts and the people that we've then brought into the organization. And you train them and you bring them up from within and then we put them out to open offices. So, uh, it's been a, a relatively long road, but um, I'm I'm super stoked about it, and I really appreciate that. I love the name Net Worth Realty, right? Um, yeah. So, talk about your story. How did you get involved with real estate investing? How did you get to Net Worth Realty? So, as we said, I'm a bar license attorney, and um, I realized relatively quickly on that that's not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, as you may be alluded to, it it allows you to know the rules of the game. Uh, how are you going to play the game if you don't know the rules? Is kind of the way I looked at it. So. All right. Um, and after that, I, I picked up a job while I was doing a, another degree that I, cause I wanted to educate myself a little further on, on business before I dove in because I wasn't going to work in the law. Uh, and while I was doing that, I happened to work at a real estate developers, uh, at Crescent Heights of America, great company, amazing company. And, uh, learned from them that real estate was phenomenal. Uh, before that, uh, and this will come up in your questions later, but it had always been buried in the back of my mind that however I figured out how to make my money, I was going to put it into real estate, uh, you know, going all the way back to landed nobles and serfs. It seemed like, you know, the people that owned the real estate were in charge. So uh, you could see that. You could see the pattern of growth even as a young person. And working there, they, they kind of crystallized it for me. And I happened to bump into a buddy of mine who was doing wholesale real estate for a company. They were moving down to Miami to open up an office, which is where I was uh, going to school. Mm. And uh, he was one of my buddies from Central Florida, where I kind of grew up originally and went to college. And he was just a Trey Alls, just a good old redneck. And Miami wasn't really his territory. And, uh, <laughs> Red so, Deck, Miami. <laughs> Red Deck, Florida. He was, he was a bit of a fish out of water. He didn't really like it. He grew to love it, I think. But um, he, uh, he wanted me to kind of introduce him to anybody that I knew and start networking and stuff like that. Long and short, uh, I started working with him. Uh, and, uh, you know, the rest, I guess, 20 years later, here we are. It's awesome, man. And so sure. did you have – so was he – who was one of your biggest influences? 
in real estate investing? So you asked me, that was the question you asked. You know, it's, I guess I could say probably Trey Alls was one of my biggest influences in real estate investing, just because if it wasn't for him, I don't know that I would have known. Not this niche. I mean, wholesaling is a very, very, very fine niche, right? So yeah. I don't know that I would have been exposed to that or even realized that there was an arbitrage play that could be made in a real estate market at a ridiculously high pace. Um, but other than that, you know, and this, I'm not trying to be like uh, esoteric or, or overly, but I would honestly, as I said, I'd have to go back to William the Conqueror, 1066, who initiated the feudal system. And if it wasn't for the idea of the feudal system growing up, man, and when I heard that, when I knew that, I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to be the guy working for the guy with the land. I want to be the guy with the land. Yeah, man. We have a breaking point. I, you know, sometimes I talk to people, and you know, real estate obviously wasn't their first choice, and so they were working a job, they were working some other. What was before that? Like, were you just in college, and then you just rolled right into real estate, or did you have a breaking point? I mean, I, I, I was in college for like ten years. Uh, <laughs> I, I, went to, I did college and then I did my, my law degree and then I did a master's program and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, at least have a family that allowed me to to do that time-wise, didn't put any crazy pressure on me. Um, they awesome. felt education was a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I was allowed to do that. And um, uh, after that, I, lit, lit, I mean, other than working for Crescent Heights of America uh, for a, a brief stint, mm -hmm. I pretty much went directly into, into wholesale real estate. Um, my father at the time was, uh, still my father, but at the time, 20 years prior, wasn't very happy with me going into real estate after going through 10 years of college, but it is what it is. And so that's how the path kind of started, you know, as far as a breaking point, yeah, I'll tell you yes and no. So, uh, I'm, a um, part of what I feel makes me or anyone else who's successful. I mean, look, look at you, you, you beat so many things you fought through, um, you know, <laughs> heart aching, life threatening challenge over and over again. Right. So did I have a breaking point? No, you don't break, man. I mean, I had points where I was beaten and battered and I had points where, you know, most people might have turned and walked away, but I, uh, I, uh, never even considered breaking. Love that man. Love, Love that. Love that perspective. You know, that, that is actually, it's pretty interesting you say that because as we get into some more of these uh, questions here, I think it'll come out that, you know, why you're so successful and uh, why you have such a team that's just crushing it is because you drive and uh, you don't accept that uh, breaking point per se. And I think that's a great perspective, man. Uh, but you do have challenges, right? What's one of your big challenges oh, you can remember? Well, I, mean, I was just going to go right back into if you want to talk about the breaking point, I mean, I had a point where I was a terrible manager when I first started managing an office and I went from being a, a salesperson to a manager. And I mean, I'm, I'm really aggressive. I'm extremely um, passionate about what I do and what I want out of life and making sure that uh, I, I try to approach every day as though it might be my last. And, and you know, that is what I'm most grateful for is just the day. Right. Yeah. So I always tell people that sometimes I think it sounds weird, but everybody's always like, have a great day. And I'm always like, you know, make it a great day. The day is, the day is what it is, man. The, the, whether you have a good time with it or not is going to be what you make of it. Love uh, that too. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And, 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 you know, I, I just, there was a time after when I was a manager that I was a bad manager that, um, I had some friends you know, partners, right. Who, uh, who ran out and left me high and dry. I mean, you know, more or less just slit your throat, turn, turn the security cameras off, take whatever they can as far as documents and stuff and, and run across the street and open up. And wow. You know, I don't even think that was, that was definitely, uh, um, something that I had never dealt with before. And it definitely pushed me and, uh, humbled me, um, and changed me as a human being in many ways. Um, but I think if you want to talk about the low point and for all the people that are out there like getting going and they're not sure what kind of, what do I have to do? And, you know, one of the things I always live by is the pain of sacrifice or the pain of regret, right? So right, if you want, to, you want to do it, you got to start sacrificing. So there was a time when my wife called me and um, I was always kind of the go buy and sell stuff. And she was kind of the back office. Uh, and she called and said, uh, we have, and we're running at this point, probably twenty twenty five thousand $25,000 in overhead as a business. Um, 
And we have some business on the board, but it's not closing anytime in the immediate future. And uh, like yeah. when I say that for our business, that's the next week or two, give or take. Yeah. Um, and she calls and goes, we've got $5,000 in the bank. What do we do? Wow. And it's like, well, what do you do? What do you do? And, and I, it took wow, a second. Man. Wow. Well, it's exactly like what you said. Like, I'm not breaking. Like, they can have it when they come and throw chains on the doors and um, shut down all the credit cards. And until that point, like, um, I know where I'm going and I know how to get there. And there is nobody that's going to stop me from getting there. Man, so powerful. 5,000 bucks. It's life, brother. It happens to everybody every day. It's how you deal with it. You've got to figure out what you want. And then you've got to be willing to sacrifice pretty much everything to get there. And it might not work, but you have to be willing to sacrifice everything at the next venture to get there and not get discouraged by the first venture. Let's talk about that. What is one of the greatest lessons that you can think about that has helped you get to where you are today? Um, you know, you, I just literally, I just wrote an article on this and they were, they wanted like at the end of it, they wanted two lessons, right? Um, and, and one of them relating back to what I was saying about, you know, I came from an environment where it was aggressive. My dad was a, basically a street kid. And, you know, it was a, a military, though my dad was never in the military slash, you know, um, uh, hard nosed environment. And people don't really react well to that when you're their manager. And I didn't know any other way to behave. So right. that's how um, you were brought up. And that's how, so you probably thought that that's the way you're going to. That's gonna, how you get results from people, right? So, yeah. no. Um, so, you know, be compassionate. Don't be a donkey was the rule that I used in the, in the article, you know, understand that there's people have, especially in today's world with, look, I'm talking to you from on a video camera, on my computer that the government sees through when we're not talking on it, you know, from my, miles and miles and miles away. And it's like, the, the people have options now. Okay. They don't need to work for someone who doesn't understand what their goals are and right. who's actually legitimately vested and interested in their goals. And you can't just say it. Uh, and sometimes you can't just do it in some actions. You have to do it in all your actions. It didn't matter how genuine my frustration and anger was. It didn't matter that it was from a place of great intensity and, and the fact that I cared about what was going on it was expressed in the wrong way. And um, so I think the greatest lesson is you have to have control. You have to be able to see through the the fury or the, the what do they call it? The, the site, what did that guy from the 4D call it? What's it called? The... Um, Four disciplines of execution. The yeah, uh, like the cyclone or the whirlwind. The whirlwind. Yeah, you got to be able to see through the whirlwind, man. I can't believe you remember that. You got to be entirely you no. Know. <laughs> you have to be able to stay calm in the storm, right? It's right. Like, like, what did you post the other day? What was the picture? And what was the quote I sent you? Do you remember? Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Um, it was. The devil uh, looks you in the uh, eye and says, or whispers in your ear, "You can't the handle storm. the storm." And, and it says, "It said, uh, I um." I am the storm. I am the storm, right. Yeah. You oh. You've got to be able to hold your calm, man. If you get emotional about business uh, in a bad way, let it overflow and lose control. You know, for me personally, that was a massively large, very difficult, probably extremely expensive lesson. Right. Right, man. That's, that's incredible, man. Um, I love that quote. In fact, I, I, um, I wrote it down. Love it. It fits um, that I, picture. I got a picture. Me. Yeah, I found a picture that was on Google that had it on there. Um, uh, but man, it's such a powerful reminder that outside circumstances often are the things that we think are going to be the end of us or control us to the point where it's going to end us you know, for better, for no other term. And the reality is, is that if we allow those outside out, uh, circumstances to control us, then in fact, um, you know, we've already lost, right? Um, but whenever you have the perspective, which I think is so powerful that you have, and it's so obvious, man, on how you look at life, you, um, where they should be more intimidated by you than you being intimidated by it. Um, you know, I was talking to my wife and, um, I said, she was, I was, you know, when you leave uh, for a little bit, you know, you, you have, we have guns in the house and everything. And she's like, well, what if a, what if a burger burglar comes in and, you know, like tries to come in the door or something or out, you know, this, this, the street that we have is, you know, they're doing some construction and somebody might try to come over. And I said, they should be more intimidated by you 
Yes. And you be intimidated by them. And it, it's just a perspective of uh, taking that taking that ownership and that authority of, of your power, right? Stepping into your power that you have that 20 years of experience, stepping into the power that you had of going through the ups and downs and falling down and, and getting back up again, getting punched and getting back up again, stepping through the power, managing people, losing people, firing people, promoting people. All of that has power, right? And we forget often that we just carry that with us. We take it for granted. But man, someone else looks over in your shoes. They're like, Mark, you're, you're amazing. You're incredible. How did you, you know, how do you do all this stuff? And for us, this, a lot of times it's second nature because that's who we are. We, we're walking in those shoes. But uh, I think it's easy it's sometimes, so to, uh, man, it's just some, it's easy sometimes to forget that how much power that we actually do have. Uh, by from the, that experience and all those other things that makes sense it makes total sense man and what's crazy is that massive power is generated from just the smallest forward motion just walking in those shoes like take steps forward every day to what your goal is and the compounding of that over the course of 10 or 15 or 20 years is right. massive but if you work every other day or when you feel like it or i mean that that doesn't yeah incremental success right incremental success and taking the step forward whether you feel like it or not yeah, it's uh, that's that's super powerful, man. If you had to change things, though, if you had to start over, right? Sure. What would be, what would be some advice that you have for for new folks? Because I'm, I'm sure you run into that quite a bit too. Is new people, uh, how how you know what would you instruct them to do, and how would you change if you had to kind of do it over again? I mean, if I had to do it over again, I would just be more. I would be more sensitive and compassionate and understanding as a leader. Mm -hmm. It's from Jump Street. So maybe I didn't have to go through um, some of the rebuilding that I did uh, early on. At the same time, um, having survived all of that and come through smiling on the other side, I don't know that in some way, shape or form, it didn't, you know, make me or, or, or just throw just extra logs on the fire to make sure that it is as fire is never dying. Right. So um, I don't know that I would change anything, man. I, I Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, the, the, yes, I made a lot of mistakes as a young man. <laughs> Even before business, especially before business, right? right? But, I mean, I, I, it, it, is there really legitimately any way to come out, you know, omniscient, no, all-knowing, and there's no mistakes? Like, you're going to make mistakes. Um, if I could change everything, maybe I wouldn't have gone to law school, man. Maybe I would have just started earlier, and what could I have done with another 10 years under my belt? I mean, um, that's something that I do think about from time to time. Hmm. Um, though I don't regret my choices to go and, and pursue my education, as we talked about, I think living with regret is silly. As I said, I look back on it as everything that happened, it happened for a reason. And without it, um, I don't know, the, the path might be very different. Yeah, man. I, as far I, as other people, new people, just the same thing. Start, go, start, take action, go right now. Action. Don't even worry about getting all the pieces right. Just take some action, get some, ah. get some momentum. You're going to make mistakes, so mm -hmm. make them and then figure it out on the way. The one thing I'll say before you act is sit down and figure out where you want to be in 20 years mm -hmm. and then don't let anybody stand between you and the vision that you have in 20 years. Other than that, just go out and do it every day. Yeah, just have a, have a plan and, and move forward with the plan. It is, it's easy to get discouraged on a daily basis of, of things that come up, you know, um, and it's a lot of reasons why if it's raining outside, right? Like, man, it's raining outside. Like I get it, man. I get it. I get it. You know, I used to say sometimes it's just, you know, I'm willing to stand here and get kicked in the, in, in the groin over and over and over and over and over again every day. And maybe that's what makes me successful. Um, I don't know. You have to be willing to take the hits. That's a very good point. I used to think that every person should be an entrepreneur, and I don't think that anyway. I don't yeah. think that anymore. I really don't. I used to. Not but everybody set up for it. I, I thank God, man, that if everybody was an entrepreneur, it would be. I, I think it does take a level of coming to grips with yourself of what there's going to be sacrifice involved. And if 100%. you're not willing to sacrifice some of those things, right? If you're not willing to put in the effort that it takes to achieve the goals and dreams that you want. Listen, no one's going to come to your door like Ed, what was that guy from Clearing House? You know, just drop it on your boat. It's, just it's not it going to happen. And so people have this idea that maybe it will, right? And I get it, lightning strikes, all that. But I'm talking about it's not going to happen, right? And so 
then you have to make a decision. Do I want to live a life that is just ho-hum and in a safe zone, essentially? Which is perfect for some people. It's perfect for, I'm glad you brought, it's perfect for some people. I used to get frustrated at that reality. And I, I get, quite frankly, I still am frustrated at that reality. You I couldn't deal with it. I don't understand how someone can just not drive the day. I don't understand how someone can just take the day for granted and just take whatever's give just just take whatever it is someone's handing out. Like I feel like I don't want to be in the in the in the stands. I don't want to be a, a I don't want to be a a a part of the audience, you know, and just just looking at the players and watching the game. Like I want to be in the game, right? I, get it. I, I, get it. I, I know you want to be in the game too, but it, it's it's frustrating sometimes whenever you find people that are okay to just being in the stands. They're okay with just watching the plays and they just get it back up and they leave and you know they they come back another day to watch watch another game but i used to fit so i i get frustrated because i want these people to see what's what they have potential to do in life and now these days i'm very thankful though that not everybody is an entrepreneur because it does take a concerted amount of effort and it does have to ask yourself, what are you willing to do? Well, how bad do you want it? I bet, I bet you with your team, I bet you've said that a lot of times. How bad do you guys want it? Because we no have one- our PIP, our performance improvement plan. It's one of the first things that we, when, when someone can't do it over and over again, the first question that me or our managers will ask is, Is this what you really want to do, man? Is this what you want to do? Because if this is what you want to do, something has to change. Yeah, man. But I think it's fear, man. You're ruled by fear. I'm ruled by fear. The other people are ruled by fear. You're afraid that you're going to miss the day. They're afraid that if they take the risk, they're going to fail, and so they take what's given to them. Mm. Um, Fear, unfortunately, is a powerful motivator, and it can lift you higher in the entrepreneurial sense, or it can keep you down. Yeah, I never really thought about that, but you're right. I don't like that word using that word fear in a negative way, but in a positive way like that, um, I, I do think fear is a powerful motivator and, um, and using it as a, I, I want to look at fear. Like I have the leash on fear, not that fear has the leash on me. Love that. I love that. You have to control it, right? For me, I keep fear right here because if it's out of my purview at all, then there's probably a higher chance that whatever this is that I'm afraid of is probably going to happen. So, so I know it's right there and I keep it at an arm's length, but I use it when I get complacent or when it's rainy, whatever it is. Like, I'm not living in a cardboard box in the alley in the rain, bro. And all I have to do is see that image or the salesman that I grew up with who lived in the back of a, you know, Lincoln Town car and they had their clothes on the, you know, the handle and it smelled like Marlboro's. And like, I can, I can take myself there like that. And I am not... Yeah. Even where I'm at right now, that is still something that has to be there to push me forward anyway. Right, man. My, I, in, my sh- in the shower every day, I say my worst day is someone else's paradise. Agreed. I, I've been saying that for, by the way, you're welcome to use that with your team. Uh, like it, is a massively, it is a massively pushing thing every day because there is somebody that is willing to trade their, my worst day, Right. And for their basically paradise somewhere in the world, you're not drinking out of a muddy river. No, man. Um, you know, so just or worse. Keeping, or worse. keeping, keeping that perspective there. What's one of your favorite motivational, uh, or business quotes? <laughs> Most of them involve profanity. Uh, so. <laughs> that's okay. You could, you could you say it. I mean, there's two that I, that I, I mean, uh, that the, the two that I use as a visceral response, right. Um, you know, one is, there's a lot of people in the world that are going to tell you no, right? F those people. It, just don't, don't even accept it. it. They're just incorrect. There's 350 million or 325 million people in the U.S. Like some of them, a lot of them, they're going to be wrong. Others, they're just not going to get it. Like just keep going. So that's one of them. Um, and I'll use a better one than, than the other one I was going to use. It's a great 
I think it's a great, it's actually an old Chinese proverb. Uh, you know, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Yeah, I love that. The second best time is right now. So again, take action. That, that It comes down to just that. And, you know, I'll go even a third on that. Um, you know, in the battle, you get real Confucius on you, right? In the battle between rock and water, water always prevails. Not because of strength, but because of persistence. So just get up and go at it every day. Even if it's, even if it's 10 phone calls, that's 10 times better than zero phone calls. So, so true, man. The, and that's a Bruce Lee thing. He always talked about how... Be water, my friend. Be water um, because of the persistence of water. People people underestimate the power of water <clears throat> uh, as well because it starts to uh, be a force that's uh, very few things are more powerful. Nothing, than. nothing, nothing, nothing over time. If you pure water, so I grew up in the water business, but absolutely pure water is completely acidic. Um, it will rot through anything, so uh, it wins. Oh, man. Yeah, soft and flowing, and will crush you. It's <laughs> incredible. What um, what books do you recommend? Do you have one that's really changed your life? Are you a big reader? Um, I like to read. I, t- I took a, a brief hiatus after law school because um, you just, it's <laughs> insane how much you read. Constantly reading. reading, yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you the two books, and I, I do, um, ironically, and we're talking about quotes, they're both kind of um, more of an Eastern book. Uh, they're not your traditional kind of, you know, Zig Ziglar or, or whatever it might be, Brian Tracy business books. Not that I don't read those, not that I don't think there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, but the ones that I think, uh, the one that I think made the biggest change for me and just how I approach my day and how I live my life generally is uh, is the Tao Te Ching. Uh, Tao, T-A-O, Te Ching, T-E-C-H-I-N-G. And it's not like a religious thing at all. It's just a philosophy on life and how things are. Um, it, a lot of stuff like, you know, be water, uh, you know, there's a, there's an energy and a flow in life personally that I believe in and that this kind of speaks to, um, if you don't believe that, uh, you know, just go where you're feeling. We all are energy. I mean, we're all, we're energy. Energy yeah. is everything. Everything yeah. is energy. So, um, it, it's a lot about, you know, that in general. And it really helped me as a young man to understand that there was a lot more at play in the world than maybe what you could just see or, or, or feel. I just maybe not feel, see or touch. Yeah, so that's cool. So you you, you don't listen to like a lot of audio books and like constant reading now. I mean, that's not like a part of your kind of success routine is. Yeah, for sure. I read a lot. Okay. I don't I don't listen to as many audio books just because I, I got into a habit. I don't I don't travel an immense amount. We're in Dallas, Texas. When I say an immense amount, I travel a lot. I'm not in the air for three or four hours a lot. You know, our corporate headquarters is in Austin. It's a 37 minute flight. Um, you know, yeah, it's great to go to some of our offices. It's, it's no, most of our offices are within a, an hour and a half, two hours. Um, so I will listen to some uh, when I'm on the plane uh, and I've gotten the habit of, of, of doing that. Um, but um, I, I still, when you're talking about my favorite books, as far as what kind of really, you know, I think helped me figure it out the best. I have to go back to that. You know, The Art of War is a is oh, a man. great book. Incredible book. I try yeah. and read it. Yeah, I try and read it fairly regularly. And I think it it really applies to, you know, to what we do. Actually, if you don't here, if you wanna, you know, you wanna talk about books, here, let me real quick. These almost everything here. I see a picture. Oh, look at the rhino. That's killer, man. Look. Hey, oh, look, Gary. Got, look at this, Mark. I got rhinos all over the place in my <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So all of these have been read, man. All these books on leadership and business and, and life. Cool door. Killer door. Um, cool office. Thanks, yeah. man. So it's, uh, I like to read. Um, it, it, there's, I think the best thing about reading is you're learning from other people's experiences. This is stuff that, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? This is stuff that other people have done and gone and seen. Um, you know, if, if you wanted me to pick a business author that I really love, I mean, I think the best books that I've read are Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Oh, yeah. The Think uh, and Grow Rich books. Killer. Amazing. I actually, um, I've given that out to a couple people as gifts. And uh, it's a book that I love. Um, it, it really is, I think, kind of, especially as, as far back as it goes, um, a great basis. Have you uh, read Rhinoceros Success? No. I'm Scott Alexander. 
Buy that book for all of your sales guys and acquisition folks. It's a short book, but uh, dude, that book is amazing. You'll love it. They'll love it. A little rhino soft work in a sense, but basically it's a comparison between a cow and a rhino and, um, and then your perspective on the day, how a cow just kind of sets around and looks up every once in a while, chewing his cub, but a rhino freaking goes after what he wants. It. It. It's an odd, it's a charging book. You see this right here? I ordered yeah. this and you stick it down here, dude, and you can just whack it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I need one of those. That's perfect. That's That's awesome. So that thing that thing helps sometimes too. That's great, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, get that book's amazing. Also, the other book is I'm a big reader, dude. I read um I can show you my pro I listen to a lot of books, um, but I I I I read read and listen to a lot of books. Um but uh there's a there's a there's a book called The War of Art. So you've said the art of war. Okay. It's called the War of Art. Okay. And, um, it's by Pressfield. The guy is an unbelievable author, and uh, it's a short book as well. But it talks about the thing that <laughs> all of us back, and it starts with the R. And so I'm just going to plant a seed there, so that way you'll read it. So be careful. okay. I'm going to check it out. All right. Um, so basically, do you have any mobile apps that you use on a daily basis? Are you more of a uh, are you more tech stuff? Are you doing stuff on the tech yeah, side? Yeah. Um, I have to, I'm, we're learning to be high tech or I'm learning to be high tech because right. it, it's just what it is. It's the future and it's how you're going to do business. But um, I'm the kind of guy who writes his speeches and writes everything that I do in pencil or pen. And, then, and then you want to know how I use technology. I take a picture of it and I send it to my assistant and she types <laughs> it up for me. Awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, it's right. It's oddly like this kind of, um, we're, it's ridiculous to a certain extent, but it works. It's, it's, it's I like to, I like to write. I love to write, uh, like actually write. So, uh, mobile apps, I would say WhatsApp is the app that we use. Absolutely. Or group me. I'm sorry. Group me is the, every one of our offices has a group me. Um, it's a great way to, for people to have fun, to share information about properties, what's going on in our business. If something sells, which it sells relatively quickly, as you know, and people need to be made aware instantaneously, especially with legal stuff. If we take down two down payments or two contracts, um, we've got some splaining to do. So uh, we try and we try and keep everything on there. We have processes and procedures. At the the majority of the other stuff that we use is really proprietary. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. We built a couple of systems um, and have uh, programs and, and IT that we use internally. I love that, man. We, uh, we use Voxer a lot, which I'm probably, you've, you've heard yep. probably more than once. Um, but it's, it's fantastic, man. We use it for our teams. We use it for on the acquisition side. I mean, it's perfect. You can, I like that. It's all voice, uh, voice activator. Yep. Southeast 45th. I'm trying to get back in there to get interior. <laughs> so it's great, man, because it's like quick, and he also, the other thing's cool about this on for, for one of the reasons I like using it too is, uh, it records their voice. So you hear the inflection. So sometimes on text and stuff, you don't get that. 100%. Um, 100%. So you hear the inflection, but then you can also transcribe it. So as we were, I don't know if you saw, so I was, we were listening to that, right? So if I hit this, you probably can't see it. If I'm going to hit transcribe right here. And, and it comes up. In real time. Yep. Real like time. That. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, in I can see time. it. Yeah. So in real time, it's actually typing out. Yeah. Uh, typing it out as, it, as he's talking. I think that's great, man. Pretty killer. Um, I use LinkedIn a lot. I know that's not really high tech, but I use it. What's that? LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah. LinkedIn. I, I need to get better at LinkedIn. I have it's a super small... easy resource, man. Anything you want, you just go in and type in the search bar and it pops up. Man, I need to get so much better at LinkedIn. I've heard so many people say great things about it. I It's part of my, it's I have it actually on my list. In the last couple of years, it's gotten much better. Yeah. yeah Where yeah, people yeah. Are, are really actually using it for business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you My get eight team. hours of sleep a night? Jeez. Depends on the night. Um, I didn't used to. I can tell you that. I try to be in bed by 1030 and I try to be up by 530, 6 o'clock in the morning. So that works out to be about 10 hours, right? I'm sorry, about eight hours. Wow. So, yeah. But my wife doesn't always like to go to bed at 10 or 1030, which I don't really get. Um, so she keeps me up a little bit. But um, And then there's I – like, I like to go to concert, uh, Grateful Dead, Fish, that kind of stuff, jam bands. That's what me and my friends do uh, on – that's on a kid awesome. throughout the year. So those nights, no way. 
Um, but yeah, most nights I try and get my eight hours of sleep, man. If I'm tired, I'm not happy. If I'm not happy, I'm not going to react well. I'm not going to think well. I'm not going to make sharp decisions. Um, and, and you know, I wind up at eight o'clock at night, like yawning and sitting on the couch and falling. So that's no, that's no good either. I uh, used to come to Arlington and go to a place called The Basement, Mr. Mark Bloom. Have you yes. ever heard about The Basement? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. So that was a place for Pantera, your, 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 oh. your, your rock band that was uh, yeah. from Dallas. Of course, both like guys have passed away now, uh, Vinnie Paul and uh, Dimebag. Dimebag Daryl. But uh, yeah, that was one of my heavy, awesome. heavy bands that I, I used to watch before they like actually that. got big. Um, I used to watch them before they got big, Overkill, and uh, would come and open up for them. Anyway, these are heavy metal bands like uh, listen they're like who the hell's that? yeah that's an old it's school a I like heavy it. metal band so early 90s man oh man and then then i got alice in chains still was <laughs> my favorite when and when lane stanley died man i was i was heartbroken such a great talent uh love i love watching rock concerts man i still love good stuff dude music is life yeah man um so but i think some some people are watching this right now there they might be like um I think I know who Allison Chains is. I remember having a conversation with somebody, and I was like, I remember we used to watch uh, Nirvana, and he goes, who's Nirvana? Oh, man. And at that moment, <laughs> I yeah. just realized bro, that I'm really 42. Yes, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly I go, right. man, I mean, it's, it's happening, right? I agree. Uh, do you have a morning routine that you follow? Pretty much. I mean, my morning routine is to wake up. I spend probably an hour, you know, in my in my bedroom, bathroom, getting ready and just working the heck out of my phone. I, I text everybody. I work my emails. I go to LinkedIn. I go to Facebook. I go to Instagram. Um, and then I go to the group. The first thing I do is I go to my group meetings. I send out any morning motivation that, that isn't um, already been handled or that I want to put out to certain groups. Then I go to all my social, my my email and all that stuff. Um, and then I loop back around and probably do it again. Um, and then I head out of the house. Wow. So your first thing in the morning, you, you realize how different this is in our life. Your first thing in the morning, what I hear you telling me is you go right into email, right into your phone, right into it. Look, I want my life that I've envisioned for myself. And I don't like the eight hours that I just slept. That's yep. good, man. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. I got stuff to do. I love it, man. I yeah. it's so you, you like throw in the face of so many different things uh, that, that people would, uh, would, would argue with. But I love the fact that it's, you've got a p clear picture of, uh, of how, you're, how you want to run things and manage things. And I take my girls to school. I take my girls to school every single morning. I walk them up to the front door. That's I spend cool. time with them. And then as soon as I drop them off, I'm back on my phone. I mean, That's I'm on my grind. That's what I, this is what I want. This is, you know what? Like, like you had a sickness and now you are very appreciative of life. Well, Absolutely. I worked in a soul sucking office for attorneys um, where every day I felt like I was literally physically dying inside. Like right. I might walk out and vomit because I just couldn't deal with how miserable it was. Yeah. And so if you're going to give me a job where I can just drive around and knock on doors for 10 hours a day. Right. What are you, are you kidding me? Is this a yeah. joke? Like, this is a job. This is, you're going to complain about that. Like not you, but I'm just saying in general. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was building this, just so people know, it's 18 hours a day. If you're not going to do that, um, and maybe you don't need it now. Nowadays with technology, you can you can multiply that a bit. But we had to go out and come back and fax stuff off, and it took oh, some yeah. Time. yeah, yeah. I mean, at, at at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to um, you know just getting some clarity on what is it that you want. And I love how you said, you know, like I've slept for eight hours, like. I'm ready to go now. I don't want to sleep my life away. And some people are like, well, you need to sleep because you need to repair and need to allow. And I, I get that. But there's also a point where you need to get up and you Everybody also Everybody needs a different amount of time they, to they need, they need a different. It's not one size fits all, is it? No. As much as we want to say it is, it's really not one size fits all. What? Some people are willing to sacrifice certain things. Yeah. What are you most grateful for? Just life, man. Just the, the the ability to wake up in the morning and not be sick and not be, you know, crippled or or not be able to not walk or not see or not hear or not talk or I mean, uh, you, you, you not drive. Uh, my parents are here uh, still, thank God. Um, you know, I have a family that I can. Part of the reason that I can go so hard and that I don't 
particularly care what other people think of me or my goals or anything like that is because I have a family that I can come home to. So um, they support me 110%. And I've been with my wife since we were 19. Um, so I'm most grateful for just the day, right? For the day and the people that I get to spend that day with, I guess. That's awesome, man. At what point would you recommend hiring a mentor or a coach? And how important... Hiring or seeking? Seeking, hiring. How, how important has one been actually to your success? Um, but what do you think in terms of uh, referring a mentor? I mean, I think there's a couple of answers there. So I don't think you need a mentor per se. You need somebody to show you the way. Like, you're not just going to pull it out of thin air. I don't care if it's a book. Like, you got to figure it out from somewhere. Right. Um, everybody needs that. I encourage everybody to seek out a mentor, someone who's got some experience. Um, if you approach them in the right manner, people that are humble uh, are willing to, as, as we talk about in um, Collective Genius, servant's heart, right? You, yeah. you help people. Um, you get what you put out in this world. It's energy. It's a very round place. It's going to come back to you. So seek out a, um, seek out a, uh, someone to help you, whether you want to call it a mentor or whatever, as far as paying for a coach or a mentor, I think that you should do that as soon as you want to take it to the next level, you've already gotten to a level and you've kind of capped out and you can afford it. You can reasonably afford it. Um, my personal opinion as coaches, we do it a lot with ourselves and with the people in our company, just the ability to talk to some completely unattached third party. It's got experience and get their opinions is right. Yeah. Massively important for your growth. So how much does it cost? How much can you get in advertising for what you're going to spend for that coach? And where are you at in your career? I think balance those things out in a reasonable way. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, some people are, I think that's also one size, not one size fits all as mm -hmm. well. I know some people that are massively successful and they didn't really lean on a coach, but they did, like you said, went out and see, sought wisdom. They sought experience. They sought those things. Um, and I know of some people that kind of go, I think whenever you get a coach or a mentor, you're buying speed. I just think because I get a chance to, if I go spend, let's say a month with you, I get a chance to get a lot of those experiences, sure. uh, the lessons that you've learned, all of that. Without banging your head against the wall. Without banging my head against the wall. And so, and potentially I'm, I'm probably going to save a lot of money because you're going to tell me the things not to do that you actually probably did or spent. It's a long list. It's a long list. <laughs> it's a long, I think for both of us, a long list. So let me ask you this. If you had to summarize it, right? Why do you do what you do, man? Why do you get up in the morning, put those feet down, ready to charge? Freaking, I do. I'm, I'm not joking. I have I got, like it. I've got freaking right. I like it, dude. I like it. Um, you know, what, why do you get up in the morning, put those feet down on the ground and just ready to charge? Rhino charge throughout the day, man. Why do you do what you do? Well, it's a great question. I, I don't know that it's any one, like we all have our why, right? Like my family is, is massively important to me. Um, but I don't need to be successful to enjoy my family. Um, but I do do that so that my family has a certain amount of freedom mm -hmm. to experience life in a way that maybe not everybody gets to, right. um, at the end of the day, and whether the psychologists are going to tell you this is right or wrong, or people are going to tell you this is right or wrong, I think it has to come down to two things. Just like we talked about with fear and motivation, right? It's a push-pull. Fear pushes you forward, motivation pulls you. When you have a $300,000 payday, are you as motivated? Then you need fear pushing you forward. So for me, why do I do it is a mixture between um, proving to myself who I am and what I'm capable of and you know that I'm exceptional at something and that I'm going to leave some mark on this world as to man that guy was he did it he, he did it um, and also I think to a certain extent all those people that told you no all those people that told you that you couldn't or that told me that I couldn't or that I was learning disabled or who didn't accept me into their school or their whatever it was like I'm bringing it man I'm going to show you that you made the wrong decision. And I'm not, I'm not begrudging. I'm not um, going out of my way to do any damage to people. I'm on my path and I am going to, it's like Sinatra says, you know, the, the best revenge is massive success. So I just, I'm here to prove a point to myself and to the world. Yeah, man, that's, you know, and it's interesting because I believe that that's one of your draws is you got, people don't believe in themselves and you in a way kind of give them that Thank belief. You, 
three above three so well. just from this conversation i feel like i can do more just from talking to you hey you know what Corey? You can do more, man. <laughs> right. Do more. You will do more, right? I, do uh, it, man. But I, I mean, just that, just the energy you, you, you convey. Uh, you know, and ex- uh, what is it? You, you convey that energy really well, man. I think people listening right now can even feel it. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about your journey, man. I'm excited that you take the time to be on here. I'm. It, it, it is nothing short than a miracle bro to to hear how many deals that you're doing under that company thank you i appreciate that in, in that space um so man hats off to you i i tend to not be able to receive really well i don't know if you're that way but just receive that dude you are thank doing you. a kick-ass job um and it's it's inspiring it's inspiring to let people know that 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 that's possible and thank you, um, you inspire me bro how, how's the way that uh, people can get in touch with you and you know, what's, what's the way that they can they email you? Can I get on your website? What's the best sure, way sure. that we can? So, first of all, let me just say, I appreciate our relationship and anything that I can ever do to help you or any of the people on here, I'm happy to do. Um, we will build this and we will build it together. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity out there. I know you're going to be going into other cities. I know that our paths are going to cross and there'll be lots of business to do. Um, as far as anybody that wants to reach out to me, you can go to networthrealtyusa.com, Networth realtyusa.com that's our show notes too on the link yep awesome if you want anybody looking for career opportunities go to glassdoor and check us out on glassdoor.com we won an award for them for the last two years is one of the best companies in the country to work for and then uh other than that if someone wants to reach me directly they can email me at mark at networthrealtyusa.com so send me an email i'll be happy to get back to you as soon as i possibly can i appreciate that man thanks so much yeah, Mark. thank you very much time. brother thanks for t- taking the time to be on here it's it's really cool to hear uh some of the things you're doing and uh you know some of the past i think that are some of the synergies I'm, you know i'm already thinking about some synergy right. that uh we could do even more stuff together well, i'm so, happy to get on here anytime you want man thanks man appreciate yes, you sir. appreciate All you right. Well, thanks for uh, taking the time to be on here, and uh, we will be uh, bringing you some another uh, and just another incredible, phenomenal guest uh, on Real Estate Investing Profit Masters. So we will talk to you soon. Remember, be a servant. See you, Mark. Thanks. Later, Corey. Hi, this is Corey Boatwright, and I have a quick question for you. What is the fastest way to reach your goals? Is it to work harder, work smarter, use system and processes, or hire rock star employees? What about just making more money? You know, actually, it's none of that. Those things are a byproduct of the one success component that every real estate investor or business owner that I know all have in common. And the answer is clarity. Complete laser focus on what you want, why you want it, and what are you willing to do to get it. So where do you find clarity? By hiring a coach and mentor. Now, could you reach the level of success that you want to achieve by doing this all on your own? You know, the Lone Ranger. Well, maybe, but do you think it would take you double or even triple the time to achieve it compared to hiring a coach and mentor to help guide your path, provide proven instruction with a tailored blueprint that you could follow for building a real estate business that supports your lifestyle and helps you reach your financial and personal goals? Absolutely. Here's the fact. Time isn't recyclable. So I would like to ask you to make good use of it and extend a personal invitation for you to book a phone coaching strategy session by going to callwithcory.com. That's callwithcory, Corey spelled C-O-R-Y, dot com. I'm going to ask you a few quick questions on that page, and we're going to go over and see how we can make sure that your business is on path to reach the goals that you want this year. So go to callwithcory.com, that's C-O-R-Y, and book your phone coaching strategy session today. Remember, be a servant, and I'll see you on there.
You've been listening to another Real Estate Investing Profits Master Podcast Series. To receive your free real estate book, Down and Dirty, Ultimate Real Estate Investing Quick Start Guide, How to Quit Your Job to Start Flipping Houses in 90 Days or Less, head online and go to realestateinvestingprofits.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash real estate investing profits. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned for our next episode.